Hi, I'm Rowan, and earlier we said that we were going to do a video talking about how all this stuff is made. You know, um, me, my avatar here specifically, um, all the hardware, the software, all the stuff that has to happen for, um, you know, stuff to happen for a video. So, here we are, we're doing this video, and um, basically the overview is that we have um, a number of apps, a couple of uh, pieces of hardware, and um, it all comes together and we make a video, right? So, the apps. We start out with um, XR Animator, which is built on, um, what is that? The Electron. That's a um, application framework that you can download for free. So that comes bundled with the XR Animator. Um, and then we go from there to VC Face. And then we go from VC Face to OBS. And then in OBS, we uh, do all of our compositing for, you know, the background, the avatar, the oddball things, videos and stuff like that, we smash together. And then uh, from there, we go into DaVinci Resolve, where we do all of our editing and, uh, you know, post work. And then from there, obviously, we upload that into YouTube. Now, that's all the standard process that I'm sure most of you already use if you're doing uh, video production. Now, the nitty-gritty details. So, why do we use so many bits of software? Well, okay, so when we first started, we were just using VC Face and OBS and, um, you know, very minimum amounts of DaVinci Resolve and uploading to YouTube. But, um, you know, the difference between me and a PNG avatar is that, um, I'm 3D, I can move, I have arms, I, I have, I have a body that can, you know, actually physically, mobily, motate, you know, I can, um, ambulate, <laughs> you know, I can do all these things, and... It makes things more complicated. So, we uh, started playing around with different kinds of mocap software. And we settled on XR Animator because it seems to do a very good job. So, what does XR Animator do? It takes your cheap webcam, in our case a $35 uh, webcam that the reviewer said was total crap, but it has a nice wide field of view and a um, good frame rate, it does 1080p and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So we start with that and we go into XR Animator with that. Uh, let me bring up um, let me bring up the uh, overhead here, and um, we'll show you XR Animator. Not that there's much to see. Uh, XR Animator has this transparent background. Um, anyhow, so the little wireframe guy over there. Hi, I'm the little wireframe guy. Hello. Yeah, that, that guy is generated with an AI. Um, which is the good kind of AI, not the, you know, art-stealing, um, conglomerate AI that we all hate. This is the good AI. Uh, it actually does something useful for us. Um, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked, sorry. But, um, the AI creates this nice wireframe. And then XR Animator uses OMC, VMC protocol. Here, let's bring this section up. And on a port, it sends VMC protocol data um, with some specific VC face stuff in there. 
Uh, and of course I can turn on my avatar and turn off my avatar there. Um, and there's mocap options over here. Oh yeah, this is the, um, Intel virtual camera. We'll have to blur Mr. R. Hi. Um, and that's kind of what XR animator does. For the core of it, it's very handy because it gives me arm motion um, uh, whole body motion, and it's fairly low impact on the system. Speaking of which, we have two video cards, um, an Intel, um, A380 and a, um, NVIDIA 3050 RTX card. The A380 is used for, um, AV1 encoding and for um, XR animator and whatever the heck else we want to use it for. But as a mainstay, um, we're using that card for uh, purposes of making the AI work better. We'll talk about the other card when we get to that part. Speaking of which, we're going to go to the next part, which is VC Face. There we go. Um, and as I mentioned, we originally started just using VC face as um, the bit that puts together our avatar and does all the, you know, uh, facial mocap. But um, VC face doesn't have arms and doesn't really have any body motion. I can't get up and move. Yeah, not that I do it often, but um, those are limitations in VC face. Now, um, what that means is that almost all the features in VC face are not, um, you can see that almost all the uh, settings are just turned off because honestly, they're useful if you have a completely uh, immobile avatar that you really don't need to have your hands work or you decide to use some other um, software for your hands then VC face is fine it is still very useful though and um, we won't be getting rid of this anytime soon uh, because well one thing um, it enables our VRM Springbone wind. So, for example, my hair. Every now and then you'll see it moves all by itself because there's a little breeze that comes through and that's from VC Face. Yeah, and um, there's other things here like our camera positions. We can change my size fairly quickly using um, the uh, hotkeys here in VC face and um, you know um, we can get really close yeah um, yeah anyhow enough horsing around right there okay <laughs> so VC face has a lot of benefits for us still um, it's what gives me all this wonderful skin tone, all this lighting, and it really puts all the data that's sent to it via VMC to good use to actually make this avatar. And then, uh, of course, this is where I get to pick my avatars and change from uh, the outfit I'm wearing currently to something else entirely. And, you know, there's all these features that we can turn on that we're not using. But the most critical one is the Spout 2 image capture, which is what we're using to send all this beautiful avatar data to OBS, which is our next step. Now, VC Face is using the NVIDIA RTX 3050. Um, and that's because, well, that's the way we do things here. We have two separate video cards instead of having one big video card. Um, because we're not going to spend 
huge amount of money on one card when, well, over time we ended up getting two other cards for other purposes and they both work for what we needed to do. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, the critical part is that um, we have to use the NVIDIA for both VC Face and OBS because the Spout 2 starts here and the Spout 2 ends here. And you have to use the same video card for the pipe to work between the two. So there we are. And we don't want to overtax the A380 because um, it's a good little card and obviously it does a good job um, getting all the data together to put into uh, VC face and we don't want to suddenly have me be stuttery uh, as many more than my mouth already does but yeah we don't want to put in any extra um, effort on that card because it's critical and it's doing a job it needs to anyhow after this we're gonna hop over to OBS well here we are in uh, OBS. This is where we composite everything together and uh, normally I, I can get away with just sending everything out as one file. We have another video talking about sending out my avatar in the background and any you know pop-up videos as separate files. You can you can find that. It, it's here somewhere if you're really into that. But that's really the whole process that we go through. And um, once we're done with this, we go into DaVinci Resolve, where we do lots of DaVinci Resolve things. Usually it's just editing, getting rid of all the weird times that something odd happens in my voice, or that I completely wander off track and start talking about ponies. DaVinci Resolve mostly is, again, using the NVIDIA 3050 RTX for uh, most of its work. But because it's a 30 series NVIDIA, we are using the Intel A380 to do our AV1 encoding and output. Okay, so that's kind of the quick and dirty overview of how we get me. <laughs> you know, me, little old me, simple little me from, um, you know, being an idea to being something out here in the world. Well, my avatar's an idea. I'm always in the world, um, sort of. Anyhow, that's another subject. I hope this video was helpful, insightful, educational, entertaining, and of course, I hope it was enjoyable. And uh, I can I can tell you it was enjoyable for us. So. Um, I hope to see you again real soon. Bye!